onto physical access exposure. And this is something where you can use a lot of just looking around and sort of common sense. Look at all of the physical grounds. When you're auditing, look for opportunities for unauthorized entrance, you know, side doors being propped open, or uh, maybe a common restroom in a building I, I can climb up into the ceiling and then come down into a secured area. Look for all the possibilities, or maybe a window that could be broken easily uh, to get in. I mean, we've certainly had that where we come in one morning and a window's broken and now we're looking for stuff that's missing. Um, but it's not just access to get to your systems. It could also just be looking for ways to damage things, or looking just at damage that happens, or vandalism or theft. Um, so do we, do we have the, the cameras? Do we have the lighting? Do we have a high enough fence? Do we have the guard presence? Um, or are we just in a place where it's, it discourages that kind of activity? And also then, what kind of physical access do folks have to any sensitive data? I mean, I've walked into places where a server was sitting underneath the receptionist's desk. In fact, I've been at a place where five servers were under a receptionist's desk. And it's like, well, what are you doing? So lots of folks do that because may maybe they don't have a dedicated server room in a smaller environment, or a particular department or remote office doesn't have it. Or maybe there's no uh, environmental control in the server room, it's getting too hot, so they've moved the servers out. You've got to watch out for that kind of thing. I've gone into a brand new building where, yes, this was designated to be the server room, but they didn't account for just how much heat was being generated, and so they had to move the servers out because the room was so hot and there wasn't enough AC there. And so it's not only access to the servers, access to the data, access to sensitive stuff, but also what kind of threats exist to your users? So you can even think a little farther. You can think like, um, can people get access to things where they can like embezzle or, or find out sensitive stuff and blackmail people? So you're going to be looking for all kinds of opportunities there with, when you're talking about physical access exposure. We can see here a picture of using a card to get in. Actually, in this case, we have two things. The card, usually we, we just swipe and um, the door unlocks. But uh, we can also see that there's a keypad there that we can punch in a code to get in as well. And, you know, when people have this kind of uh, entry control, make sure that people aren't piggybacking behind the person. You know, one person swipes their card and five people come in kind of thing. So when you're looking for physical access control, look for all the very typical things, you know, like are the doors locked, are they shut? Um, is there any way to like get around the doors, climb through the ceiling, through the floor, something like that? Um, are we logging people coming and going, visitors? Do visitors have to be escorted with badges? Um, what kind of identification systems do we have? Do we have cameras to extend guard presence? Um, and do we have guards? Um, do we need guards? And then what kinds of personnel do we have? Like if we have companies come and destroy documents or carry our, our backup tapes or something or store our documents off in another location, are they bonded? Um, then do we have like um, man traps and dead man doors? So the idea then is that you enter one door and you are stuck in a small area and when the first door closes, only then does the second door open. I actually have a humorous story about that. This one um, Actually, I'm not going to identify the kind of organization even. But a very high-ranking official uh, wanted to bring in his favorite chair. And so he brought in his favorite chair um, at night, and there was no one around. And um, however, the chair was big enough and heavy enough that the man trap thought it was two people. And this guy was locked in there with his chair until someone came along hours later. So um, the, the idea of the uh, man trap or the, the dead man door. And then also, what physical barriers do we have, as well as lighting, and what alarm systems do we have? So be looking for all of these kinds of physical access controls. Users also need to understand their own responsibilities, and this is part of the due care and due diligence to train users so they do understand what their responsibilities are. It's not enough to just say, hey, security is your responsibility. You've got to train them what to look for. And it's not enough just to say suspicious activity. They may not know, they may know obvious things like someone breaking in, but they may not know something that's a little more subtle. 
so you need to make sure users understand their responsibilities in terms of not only physical access, and 20 of us don't come in on one person's badge, but also system access or, or device access. And because people are very often um, faked out, thinking that somebody who's acting official, wearing a logo t-shirt, acting like they're knowing what they're doing, is an official person, and they might not be. So you've got to make sure users know this. And as an IS auditor, I will randomly sample and ask people, and you know, what, what, if you see this kind of situation, what do you do? So for securing IS systems, uh, information systems facilities, there are all kinds of locations that you need to physically secure. Not just the server room, but also the area where um, developers are programming or are running systems, operators are running like mainframes. Um, storage facilities, we'll need to secure those as well. Or the, um, any off-site backup locations or disposal uh, or any kind of communications closets. I mean, like I've said before, I came in one time and the uh, telco room was propped open on a Sunday, you know, propped open by a ladder and no one was around. Now, of course, all the hardware, the local area network, all the uh, power sources and the cables. So look for all of these places where there could be a vulnerability or where someone could uh, sneak in some kind of equipment or sneak out some kind of equipment. And so like I, I was at this one place, yeah, they had a guard at the front door and nobody at the back door. Anybody could go out the back door just by pushing open the door and there was nobody there. So you, you have to be thinking of all possible entries and exit points and all places where any of the IS equipment might be, including the infrastructure. For monitoring physical access, we can have intrusion detection, we can have surveillance, and we can have entry security systems that like log people, you know, when they, they type in a code, it logs in whatever, that code, that time. You'll probably want to be looking at those logs when you are um, auditing for physical security. So when we are evaluating the design, implementation, and monitoring of physical access controls, some of the things we need to look at is we need to see it all. We need to tour the whole facility and see where everything is. Where are the printers? Where are the doors? Where are the servers? Where, where is the telecom? Where's the telco? It's down in the basement. You know, where's stuff that is in and out of your control? We need to tour all the off-site locations. Where do you store things? Where are the branch offices? We need to look at all these things. Now, of course, it does depend on the scope that was determined by the charter. But within the scope, you need to tour everything and take a look at everything. We need to review all the physical access and, and ask people, is this door open all the time, you know, or how are people getting in? We need to test these controls. Let's actually test it. I went to a place that you had to press uh, a certain keystroke, but if you pushed hard enough, the doors just popped open because of the way they were. So yeah, there was this, uh, you know, this key thing here, but I just could push them open. So I mean, you have to test these things. Um, you'll have to look at all their documentation and all their logs and review the whole physical environment surrounding it. Yeah, your dumpster's out there, but did you guys know that you're throwing out sensitive documents that aren't shredded there? And, uh, or the, um, the door to the, uh, uh, the loading dock is wide open. And, um, you know, uh, by the way, uh, uh, people are sitting with their backs to a window and walking by or with a pair of binoculars, I can look straight at their computer screen. So you want to look at all of these possible things when you're evaluating physical security. The next thing we'll talk about is environmental security.